Good girl. <laughs> Legend. That's cute. Good girl. Hi and welcome. I'm Caroline Best. This is Everything Horses and More. I'm on Lovey, my nine-year-old, off-track thoroughbred mare, and we're going to be talking about and demonstrating the next blog topic or episode and it is one that haunts me all the time. <clears throat> I have heard about this throughout my professional career as an instructor and trainer the entire time, all the time from my students at all levels, um, mostly at all levels. Of course, I'm not dealing with uh, FEI or Grand Prix and dressage, but just your basic foundation for riding is missing. And so that led me to the topic of your riding basics or fundamentals of riding. What every rider should know and should be taught from the beginning. So what happens is you've been riding for years. I don't know how many. So you've created habits now. And there's holes in your riding foundation. So you can't fix anything. You're going from trainer to trainer, instructor to instructor. Either your horse can't be fixed or you can't be fixed. It's the same issues that keep coming up. And as you progress as a rider, just like the classical dressage training pyramid, or even my pyramid, which has eight areas, training, um, if there's a hole in your building blocks, then it will affect you as you continue to get better or progress. And that's a core thing that isn't being taught. It's like trainers and instructors here in the United States, they are not apprenticing. They're not learning from true masters. They love horses. They start as, I don't, let me back up. I do not want a teenager or a 20-something instructing me, training me, or teaching me how to ride. I don't care how old you are. I don't care if your kid is learning how to ride. They should learn from someone that has apprenticed, someone that has at least 10 adult years of experience, just like your vet. I don't want a vet fresh out of school because they're textbook smart. They don't have the experience to answer so many of the common questions that come up around horse injuries or horse health or horse care. It's just common sense, you guys. And so when I see a lot of these bloggers out there that are in their early 20s or even mid to late 20s out there, they are basically, a lot of them, regurgitating stuff that they've already been taught. So go learn from a master. Learn from somebody that really has been around for a long time. They have a, a large track record of experience. And it doesn't have to be prof uh, showing or competition. But it has to be training, learning, and instructing. 
I'm really passionate about that and it really bothers me because in our country, in the United States, there are too many people that just hang their hat out and say I'm a trainer. I've even had young working students fresh out of equine colleges with a two to four year equine studies degree, bachelor's degree or associate degree, and they think they're trainers. They don't possibly know what I know. Not, they don't know what I know. Well, most people don't know what I know. Let's put it that way. That's why I'm doing this blog, because I'm sick and tired of the dogma, the bull crap out there in the dogma and the propaganda by some of our leading experts and professionals. Not all of them. And I'm not alone when I talk like this. So we'll get back to the topic here. I want Lovey to stand on all four. I don't want my horse to have a cocked leg. And the reason being is it puts you off your balance point. I don't have a saddle. If something were to come up and spook her, by the grace of God, I go to my safety position and she knows what that is. But if I don't, I'm going to be on the ground. And it's not good for a horse if you're sitting on them during a clinic all day or for hours at a time. They should have their weight equally dispersed amongst all four. Okay, you don't want them cocking a leg so you're off your balance. All right, so getting back to the fundamentals of riding, what I believe, based upon all of you over the years, the same things, you guys, the same problems, I see a pattern. And so we're going to talk about just some basic, a checklist of basic riding foundation that you guys need to be taught from the very beginning. And I want you to wrap your brains around the common sense of this. And if you study classical dressage, then you understand how important it is to follow a training scale. I have developed over 500 instructional step-by-step -step videos on my online course academy website. So you can go there as well. And I have my own training pyramid. It's a little bit deeper and broader because I include the spirituality of horsemanship. I include liberty. I include the art of lunging and developing your horse mentally and physically before you ever ride. So now we're to riding. We have a great uh, horse, school horse named Miss Lovey. And I'm going to read this and then I will demonstrate to you. So I just jotted down, which you'll find on the blog page, so you guys have a visual. I just jotted down over the years, these are the same things that come up over and over again. And this is any level rider. I don't care if you're a young kid to an older woman, which is a lot of my audience coming back to horses. And, and you're taking lessons and it doesn't feel right. And you're older and wiser. And you're like, wait a minute, the horse doesn't feel right. There's tension, there's not enough relaxation underneath of me. My instructor's telling me things that are requiring way too much force with my horse and contact in the mouth. Um, I don't feel like I'm balanced on my horse in the saddle. And uh, a lot of times you guys are taught immediately how to trot or canter. And that shouldn't be taught until you are developed and your horse is developed properly. And so that's a, a big dogma or myth or propaganda with a lot of these um, wannabe trainers. And I don't care if they've been around for 20 years. You know, walk the walk, don't talk the talk. Show me what a good horse trainer you are. Show me some of your, your protege, your, your students, and what good riders they are and what they understand with their horsemanship about the horse. Don't just talk the talk and steal the language from other professionals because it's working for them. I want to see it working in front of my eyes. So as a student, always a student, I'm always a student of the horse, and throughout the years I try different instructors to help me. I haven't had one for years. Um, the best instructor I've ever had, besides being a young child, was my working equitation instructor. I'm certified in working equitation and she's just amazing but she's retired. And so I've been struggling to find someone who knows a lot about horsemanship um, in classical dressage and someone that has worked her way up the FEI levels of dressage and is quite an accomplished rider. Um, not just with Iberian horses like the Andalusians which my um, previous instructor raised but she 
worked her way up the levels in dressage with a 14.2 hand Appaloosa quarter horse. So that's pretty impressive. Pretty awesome. Lovey does not like the noise of the paper. So hopefully um, some of the work I've been doing with her lately with the noise of bags has helped her and she won't flip out on me. But it, thank you. It'll thank you. Don't flip out on me then. So again, this is what I believe and what I teach. Every rider that comes to me, you guys get assessed. I don't care what level you are. I want to see how you handle one of my school horses, what you know. Just like I assess the horse, I want to assess my rider. I don't just bring you in and start teaching you stuff. I want to see what you know and where you're at, what, what you're comfortable with, what you're not comfortable with. Where are you? Give me a baseline of information. Just like I want to know from the horse. But you're still going to start out from the beginning. I'm going to clean up everything and give you a good curriculum and a good foundation. Building blocks. You need building blocks when you're being taught or training horses because that's how you can go back and assess when there's a problem. So if I'm working on my lateral movements at the trot with Lovey and she seems tight, I go back to the previous building blocks and I review them with her. And I 100% of the time will be able to catch something that I wasn't paying attention to or I didn't have enough time on. Does that make sense? So that's why you've got to follow a curriculum, you guys. For all the people out there that, that other professionals that aren't masters, a master trainer and a master instructor always has a curriculum. So weed out the trainers and instructors that don't have curriculums. I would want to talk to them. How do you teach? Do you have a method? Do you have building blocks? Do you have a curriculum? I do. When you buy my first DVD series, you get over 40 pages of my tutorial. When you sign up for my online ca classes, courses, especially my lifetime membership, you get a ton of tutorial, a step-by-step -step instructions via my videos as well as paper. You have to have a curriculum. It's just like us going to school, just like humans going to school. We all start out learning the same textbook in our country. We all start out the same grade, it's the teacher that makes the difference. We all have to learn the same things until we get to a certain point that we can specialize. So, it has been my experience that no matter what level rider you are, there are certain foundational aspects of riding that just aren't being taught correctly. These areas are foundational, meaning if the rider is not educated or made aware, they are missing major pieces that will continue to affect their ability to ride well, communicate effectively with your aides with your horse, and overall it will affect your confidence because you'll just get frustrated and feel defeated. Why aren't I learning? And a lot of your instructors just don't know. And they, you get stuck because they don't know how to help you. Or they stuck so you don't leave. So you already heard how much it bothers me. And that's why I'm doing this episode. So here is a list. Let me see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Of 10 of the areas that I have found over the years. Pattern. Everybody has these problems. And please feel free to add in the comments area. Add to this. <laughs> 